There are many coveted, game-changing, busted items in Valheim. The Mejingjord Belt from Haldor, the Feather Cape from the Mistlands, and the Serpent Shield from the Armor of the Ocean Serpent, to name a few. And yet, the Swamp has the highest density of any biome for broken in-game items. Follow me as I unlock an underrated bow in the Swamp's Sunken Crypts, acquire an in-game chest piece by defeating these monstrous creatures, and snag this biome's boss trophy for the best forsaken power in the game. But before we get into any of that, let us make sure we are properly prepared to navigate the swamp. Firstly, the swamp is dark, wet, and unforgiving. In fact, it's constantly raining in this biome and therefore you will always have the wet status effect applied to you. The wet effect will reduce your health regeneration by 25% and your stamina regeneration by 15%, in addition to making you weak to frost and lightning damage. Ensure you get your rested effect buff before entering the biome to counteract the wet effect. Unfortunately, you will not be able to regain your rested effect bonus after it expires fires will under the wet status. However, do bring materials with you to build a fire as later in this video I will show you a tip to regain your rested effect bonus while in the swamp. Secondly, many of the swamp's creatures apply poison damage to you with their attacks and without something to counteract that effect you will quickly perish. Fortunately, completing the black forest biome provided the recipe for the mead base for poison resistance. Craft a couple of these and use the fermenter to convert them to poison resistance meads. With a mead popped you will take 75% reduced damage from poison for a full 10 minutes. I recommend having a full stack of 10 of these before entering the swamp. Thirdly, armor. I recommend using your best armor from the Black Forest, either the troll if you're looking to travel through the swamps quickly, or the bronze if you're eager for a fight. As per weapons, I would recommend a weapon that does blunt damage like the bronze mace. The creatures in this biome do not have many weaknesses to work with, but as you will see in the next section of this video, quite a few of them are susceptible to blunt damage. In addition, always have a bow with you to take out creatures at a distance. I recommend taking some bronze arrows if you have them, and some fire arrows for those creatures susceptible to fire. With your rested bonus, armor, and weapons equipped, we can now work towards the first broken item in the swamp's overworld. The swamp overworld provides an abundance of resources for us to progress our games through weapons, armor, and equipment upgrades. Much of these resources are derived from the dangerous critters that call this biome home. First are their blobs and oozers. These creatures scuttle across the ground and make giant leaps in your direction to quickly close distance between you and them. Beware, as these creatures also can apply poison damage to you, so make sure you have a mead handy. Keep in mind, you cannot retroactively pop a poison mead. The mead must be active prior to the poison effect being applied to you to provide resistance. Fortunately for us, these are weak to blunt damage, so the mace I recommended earlier will come in handy. When blobs are killed, they will drop ooze and the blob trophy, while when an oozer is killed, they will spawn two additional blobs and a small chance of scrap iron. While you can get scrap iron from these creatures, they are not a reliable farming source. I will show you how to reliably get scrap iron in the next section of this video. Second are the Draugrs and Draugr Elites. These creatures are undead vikings and can either have melee or ranged weapons with no real weaknesses to speak of. The Elites are stronger versions of the base Draugr and when defeated they can drop entrails and their corresponding trophies. The entrails unlock a nice new health food recipe, while the Draugr Elite Trophy is part of a unique melee weapon. I will ensure to brief you on all of the weapons and food recipes you will have unlocked in the swamp later in this video. Third are leeches. Leeches can be found swimming in the shallow water across the biome. Like the blobs and oozers, they do apply poison damage but are relatively low health. Killing them provides you with blood bags and the leech trophy. Next are certlings and wraiths, which are the rarest of spawns in the biome. Wraiths will only spawn at night. These can be airborne and weak to fire. This is where those fire arrows can come in handy. Once defeated, they will drop chain and the wraith trophy. You will need chain for the upgraded cooking station and for upgrading your forge. Certlings, on the other hand, only spawn near flame geysers and are a rare spawn in themselves. If one has spawned, you will have a hard time missing the sight of flames. Certlings will hurl fireballs at you, but the good thing about constantly being wet is that you are resistant to fire damage. Defeating these will give you coal, certling cores, and rarely the certling trophy. Farming certlings near these geysers make for an excellent certling core farm. And I should mention you will also find skeletons across this biome, which you will be familiar with after clearing the Black Forest biome. They can be found randomly standing around or more dangerously by evil bone pile spawners. Clear these ASAP to avoid being mobbed by skeletons. Before I get into the final creature holding the key to crafting this broken chest piece, I need to first cover other key resources not obtained from creatures in the swamp. First, the swamp introduces a new type of tree and wood in ancient trees. Chopping down these trees with at least a bronze axe yields ancient bark, which will be a critical ingredient in crafting swamp weapons and armor. 
Second, you can acquire turnip seeds from yellow flowers found rarely on the swamp floor. Combine these seeds with the cultivator to start a turnip farm in the meadows. Now, without further ado, the final creature in the swamp to conquer is the almighty Abomination. Abominations emerge from what can be mistaken as a stump when you encroach on their territory. While intimidating, they are relatively easy to parry and susceptible to fire damage. Slash damage works best, so either slash away with a sword or take them down at a distance with fire arrows. Defeating Abominations provides you with their trophy, guck, and root. Root in particular enables crafting of the Root Armor Set and my first broken item, the Root Harness Chess Piece. This chess piece is one of the only methods and the only wearable item to provide resistance to damage from pierce attacks. This resistance is truly broken for the swamp and into endgame biomes like the plains and even the mistlands. Creatures throughout these biomes do a ton of pierce damage. For this reason, the Root Harness is a critical component of my recommended endgame armor and you get it only halfway through the game, truly busted. On top of that, the Root Mask also provides poison resistance. As a result, if you equip the mask, you will no longer have need of poison resistance meads. Before we dive into the sunken crypts and explore my second broken item, I should mention that guck obtained from abominations can also be mined from guck sacks found on trees. Simply mine or chop them off the tree to obtain guck. Sunken crypts are the swamp's dungeons and are gated rectangular stone structures with green glowing torches, making them easily identifiable. To enter these crypts, you will need the swamp key, which you should have acquired following defeating the elder in the Black Forest. Pro tip, as you will notice when entering the crypts, you can finally take a break from the wet effect. Seize this as an opportunity to craft a fire in the crypt entrance to regain your rested effect buff. Inside, you will find familiar creatures such as draugers, draugr elites, blobs, and body piles, which will periodically summon draugers. Make sure you clear these quickly before getting overwhelmed. However, the reason we are here is to mine the mud piles blocking the passageways within the dungeon. Mining these piles will provide us with scrap iron, leather scraps, and withered bones. Search the chests within crypts for large piles of scrap iron, more withered bones, and valuables like rubies. Withered bones will come in handy as I will describe later in this video, but the true treasure here is the scrap iron. Refining the scrap at a smelter will yield iron, bringing us into the Iron Age, unlocking a ton of weapons, armor, and tools. I will share the full list of new weapons and armor unlocked in the swamp biome on screen now so feel free to pause the video here. Included in these unlocks is what I consider to be the second broken item provided by the swamp and what many consider to be the best bow in Valheim in the Huntsman bow. Let me explain. While doing less damage than late game bows in the Draugr Fang and Spine Snap bows, it has a much lower stamina cost for use with eight stamina per second compared to 10 and 14 from the Draugr and Spine Snap. That said, where the Huntsman truly shines is its attack and hit radius being 4 meters compared to 15 and 8 on the other two bows. What this means is that using this bow and hitting enemies with it does not draw the attention of other creatures as easily, enabling you to isolate enemies with ease. This is best illustrated by attacking a herd of loxes in the plains. As you can see, you can draw the attention of a single lox with the Huntsman that is simply not possible with any other bow. And with that, we can turn our attention to our third and final broken item acquired by defeating the swamp's boss. First off, take a moment to review the full list of food recipes unlocked in the swamp so you can be best prepared for the fight. With optimal food in your belly, we need to first find the location of our boss. The runestone providing bone masses location can often be found within sunken crypts or within ruined structures across the overworld. Once its location is identified, grab your rested effect bonus, craft some poison resistance meads, equip your best armor, I recommend iron if you've crafted it, and lastly, I recommend again a blunt weapon like the iron mace or iron sledge. Bone mass is resistant resistant to slash, fire, and pierce, and immune to poison and stagger. Fortunately, he does have a weakness to blunt and frost. For this reason, your best bet for defeating bone mass is up close and personal with a blunt weapon. His forsaken altar is super cool, highlighted by a massive skull filled with acid. To summon him, you'll need to bring with you 10 withered bones to sacrifice. But before summoning him, I do recommend you raise the earth around his spawn location, especially if there's a lot of water around, as fighting in water is no fun at all. Once summoned, he has three attacks. First, a simple melee attack when up close. Second, an area of effect attack, which summons a green guy cloud causing poison damage. And finally, he will occasionally throw a glob of goop that will spawn up to four random creatures. Once defeated, Bowmass will drop the Wishbone and Bowmass's trophy. His trophy is the third broken item provided by the swamp as when attached to his corresponding sacrificial stone unlocks his forsaken power. This forsaken power gives you and nearby players 50 to 75% reduced damage from blunt, slash, and pierce damage for five minutes. 
Damage reduction is absolutely busted and is my go-to for sick and power, even deep into the Mistlands. For this reason, I think it's completely broken. And lastly, as you turn your attention towards the next biome, the Wishbone will be critical in progressing your game through the mountains. Speaking of the mountains, check out my full mountains guide on screen now. Thanks for watching.